You gotta be kidding me. My first opportunity to capture an osprey. But there's like two or three of them. <laughs> wow, there's three babies. What is good? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. It is a balmy 90 degrees Fahrenheit out, really sticky, muggy, uncomfortable for the most part, but there is a light breeze, so I'm happy about that. We're gonna go on a hike, try to get some wildlife and some nature shots in the bucket. But before we do that, I wanna do kind of a what's in my camera bag. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions, DMs, emails through Instagram. Like the weather along these marshes can really quickly turn because everything's so open. The weather can just go from 90 degrees, 100 degrees, hot, humid, sticky, to uh, tornadoes, thunderstorms, heavy winds, hail. There is a bald eagle's nest that's about half a mile away from my current location. So we'll uh, take a walk up there as well. It's been a while since I've uh, captured one of those guys. Check out these beautiful flowers real quick. These are absolutely gorgeous. Just the lilacs, the yellows, the purples. Uh, these flowers are actually humongous, to tell you the truth. I can't go too much further down off the trailhead here because it actually downslopes pretty steep. Probably gonna get tick infested. So the pack that I'm currently using is the Osprey 24 liter Stratos. I also had the 36 liter Stratos, which I use for all of my trips that I may be doing more than a three day trip out. Reason why I uh, went towards more of the, of the camping bags is because I've actually been through a dozen camera bags over the years uh, from Low Pro to F-Stop, to Atlas. I found that the traditional hiking bags work better for my needs for quite a few reasons. One, the breathability in these packs are second to none. Just the way that uh, they have these set up for ventilation is second to none uh, to the traditional camera bags. I have yet to find a good camera bag that fits all my needs, that is very comfortable, and that has proper ventilation like these Osprey backpacks do. Camera backpacks, there's some good ones out there on the market, especially from the big big names of F-Stop, you know, Low Pro, Atlas, and uh, Shimoda, and some of the other ones. But man, you're forking out a pretty penny, $400, $500, where a good hiking backpack like this will set you back maybe 150. And uh, the only downside is you need a camera insert. And I'll get to that in just a second as far as what I'm utilizing as well with all the gear. Uh, we're gonna go through the outside of it and uh, kind of how I have it rigged up. I am some, I do sometimes carry a cell phone pack right here. On the left shoulder strap here, I have this really quick and easy boo-boo kit, something you know, light, convenient. Uh, inside, I just have quick and easy access to just the simple basic first aid uh, sting ointment, alcohol prep pads, uh, stuff like that. And then in the emergency thermal space blanket here that I can make shift into a tarp if I want to, or a quick blanket uh, if I'm stranded out here for whatever reason. I have two, two little small carabiners, maybe attach some gloves. And this one has a couple tools that are handy for your tripod or your L bracket. So on the very bottom of the backpack, there's a little zipper compartment where the rain cover for the backpack is. On the hip straps, there's two pockets here, zippered pockets. And what I keep in the first one is two forms of light. Uh, first one is my head torch. This is normally my go-to, as well as a backup uh, flashlight. This is a Streamlight MicroStream, uh, both USB powered, rechargeable, uh, which is very convenient to have. In the right hip pocket, I keep this uh, insect repellent as well as some cordage. And I utilize a lot of these for my tent, tarp, whatever that I need to if I am out here and I need to make some kind of shelter. On the sides here, I will often put a one quart water bottle or a one quart canteen right here. 
and uh, utilize this side for anything else that I may need for that mesh pocket. But for today and most of my trips, I bring my sling water can two quart canteen and uh, it's a little bit more cumbersome. I can't just fit it in the backpack. It's another thing I have to carry around along my shoulder. Uh, but I absolutely love this during the summer months. During the winter months, I'll carry my uh, big, bigger canteen for all my coffee and hot beverages. In the front sleeve right here, I keep my rain cover for my wildlife lens and camera. This is my lens coat. Works really well. Keeps everything waterproof. And uh, it fits uh, the 100 to 500 here, my RF 100 to 500 and my Canon RP really well. Uh, and it also fits a five or 600 F4 prime. It is the one downside to these types of bags is I cannot fit my camera or my lens inside the bag. Uh, typically I'll just uh, hold it anyways and uh, carry it along the trail just like this. You guys will be seeing a new camera within the next 12 months. I will be upgrading from the Canon RP here. I don't really like upgrading my gear often when I find what works for me and I dial it in. I'm one of those types of photographers where I, I, I use it into, until either A, it breaks on me or B, I'm being held back. This is just one of those situations where the camera is failing on me more than anything. My Canon R7 that I had on the channel a couple months back got damaged and broke and the Canon RP here I've had religiously been shooting also for the last three or four years. Uh, the autofocus is starting to fail on me now. So I'm gonna be probably upgrading to the Canon R1 or the R5 Mark II. That will be my forever camera uh, paired with the RF 100 to 500 here and the 100 2.8 macro lens for all my macro shots, my RF 15 to 35 for all my landscape shots. Basically using that rig going forward for all of my hiking. But anyways guys, back to the bag and the loadouts of what's in it. Up top, right here. In the front pouch, my rain cover for the vlogging camera. Also keep my car keys as well as a Bic lighter. Because of the fall just around the corner and especially out here where it's open along the marshes, even though it's 90 degrees outside during the day, 80s and 90s, it can drop really quick, especially during bad weather and that can turn really quick. So I just keep a wool beanie hat and some wool glove inserts here. I know you can get the expensive camera gloves where you know the, the flip out hands, uh, but these work better for me and my needs. Also keep up here, this scarf here. Uh, this is good just to break up the silhouette um, you know, of your camera gear or a big white lens or anything like that. Obviously keep it around your neck and protect from the sun and the harsh heat and humidity. Um, it's, it's mesh, so it's very breathable. I uh, can't go anywhere in the summer without a trusty bug net. <laughs> Cause pff, man, the mosquitoes, let me tell you what. Now for the meat and potatoes of the bag inside of the main compartment. Again, you gotta use a camera insert for this type of application with the hiking bags. And I don't mind it. Um, I've gotten used to it. And like I've said before, it works better for me and my needs. Camera insert that I use is by Lowepro. Uh, I can't remember the name of it exactly, but I'll leave a link down in the description if you're interested in uh, this specific uh, camera insert. And underneath the camera insert, at the very bottom of the bag, I'll have my rain coat, uh, rain jacket. One really cool thing I like about this specific insert compared to a lot of the other ones on the market, this one unzips from the top uh, and uh, folds down to the side. So it completely opens up from the shell, from the top down. Unlike a lot of the other ones where they're just the side opening only, which means technically you have to pull this thing out with the other kinds just to access your camera gear. Where this one, if this is up top, you can literally just open your backpack, your hiking bag, and then unzip just the top, just enough to where the top is, unfold it, and then you can access your camera gear or whatever you're using, however you set it up, because it does come with dividers too, just like a normal insert does, and just pull out your camera. So I like that, that's a pro to me. So what I've done is I removed um, the inserts themselves inside of this insert here, and I uh, just utilize these Molly pouches. This works well because everything has its place. Everything is organized. First up on top is my medical kit here. Uh, I purchased this bag separately empty because I wanted to kind of 
make things my own way and purchase uh, different types of items for my own needs out here on the trail. And uh, basically on the back here I have trauma scissors and then as well as a pocket knife here. This is a Buck uh, 112 Ranger and it works really nice for uh, the light duty type tasks. And that pairs up nicely with my pocket knife that I carry on the trail, which is my Buck 192 Vanguard. Uh, this is my go-to knife for all of my backwoods camping, hiking uh, adventures, and it's done its job really well while I'm out here. Just keep a water filter uh, just in case. If I run out of water, uh, the two liter quart canteen, I can uh, access clean, safe drinking water from a stream, pond, river, lake, as well as not just some of the refills for my quick and easy access first aid kit that's on the shoulder strap. Uh, have some of the refills for that and more of the uh, severe type bleeding and trauma tools such as a tourniquet and an Israeli bandage. For the next pouch here, just my binoculars. Uh, these are my Vortex Diamondback HD 10x42s. Uh, really solid uh, piece of kit here and not overly expensive either so I like that. As well as a battery bank and we'll get to that in a second. So I got two more pouches here left inside the insert and they're both for technically a GoPro. I don't uh, use a GoPro much anymore. Um, however, I do use the pouches that it comes with as, and as well as the hard case that uh, you can purchase for it as well. Inside of the soft pouch here, I keep a lot of my uh, personal information, stuff like that. My wallet will go in here, uh, just an extra pad of paper. Uh, my journal to write all my journal entries um, that's here on the trailhead, uh, an extra pack of smoke, a map of my area with a compass, as well as uh, a garbage bag. This is also come in handy, very light, minimalistic, doesn't really weigh much of anything. Good for emergencies, you know, a tarp or a uh, poncho, or even to cover your gear in, throw over your camera bag if you want to waterproof it even more, or just to pick up some trash that we may see along the trailhead. Inside the last one, uh, the hard shell case, is a lot of my uh, camera gear uh, for vlogging and stuff like that. So uh, I have my filters here up top, my Tiffin filters, variable ND filters, a 77 and an 85 millimeter circular polarizer and ND filter. Uh, as well as uh, my Pelican case up here, which stores my memory cards. Uh, down here uh, in this compartment, I have my 1.4 times teleconverter, my batteries for both my vlogging camera and my wildlife camera. Uh, another spare lighter, just because, you know, two is one, one is none. I always go by that philosophy while out in the field. Uh, batteries, extra batteries for my uh, microphone, as well as a USB-C cord, an extra dongle there. And then also my emergency beacon GPS here. This is an ACR rescue link, similar to a Garmin inReach. The really only difference is these do not need a subscription, paid subscription like you do the Garmin's. Um, however, these do not, you can't send text. But if you need some form of GPS emergency, GPS satellite, uh, in case of an emergency to send the authorities out to you and to send rescue teams out to you without needing to pay a paid subscription monthly, uh, the ACR Rescue Link is a good option there. I also slide this portable 20 watt solar panel in the back of the backpack right where the water bladder would sit normally. This works great to be able to power all my devices while out here on the trail when I'm, you know, four, five, six, seven, ten 10 miles out away from my vehicle. For input, my little power bank here is for input one USB-C and output two USB-A. But it's very small and lightweight, which I like, and it pairs still nicely with this uh, Goal Zero here. And to get more than just two charges out of any of my devices, I would just plug a USB-A to USB-C uh, adapter right in the back of this and uh, basically unfold it just like that, put it up against the sun, it comes with a kickstand here, unfold that out and let it sit in the sun and then plug in the USB-C to my power bank here or straight into my cell phone. And uh, this 20 watt will charge my devices probably within three to five hours. I'm not overly concerned with bringing a huge meal simply for two reasons. One, 
I'm usually only about five to six miles away from my vehicle, which is where all I do my main base camping at, cooking, uh, overnight stays. But I will keep a light snack or some kind of light lunch uh, alongside my hip in a separate pouch. Also, I carry electrolyte, little electrolyte packets uh, in my emergency kit. That way I can just throw that in my water to get my uh, electrolytes uh, refueled uh, because that's also important too. So the backpack fully loaded, including the two quart canteen water, is just over 21 pounds. So it's definitely doable along the trail. It's nothing too overly heavy. About to maybe get some rain. I don't know. We got some some darker clouds going on here, but we'll keep an eye on that. We're gonna hike up to the bald eagle's nest and see if he's around. A lot of the content has been mixed bag with camping and uh, photography talk over coffee at the Jeep. And uh, just simply because I'm trying to get 100% again. And I, I enjoy, you know, sharing uh, that encouragement to, to each and every single one of you guys too over coffee. Uh, I think it's kind of unique and something different that I'm going to continue doing on the channel going forward. Uh, as well as these hikes uh, for photos to share. You gotta be kidding me. I think, I think, I think I see an osprey. I've never, I've never encountered an osprey before out in the wild. He's way out there. It's his nest, I think, that's on top of this pole, really super far out, but there's like two or three of them. There's three babies and then a mother or father that is perched up on the, uh, another uh, branch off to the side of that pole. I can't, I can't access that. There's no way I can get down into that uh, without maybe getting into a kayak or some kind of boat. Oh, but man, guys, my first opportunity with some Osprey. <laughs> How cool is that? Even though they were far away and not really great photos of them. Of course, I would just have a bald eagle fly overhead too. <laughs> Shenanigans out here, guys. Shenanigans. This RP struggles so much with autofocus anymore. It's uh, on its last leg for me, I know that. Maybe if I just keep taking the battery out and put the battery back in, but it's gonna have to do at least for the next 12 months, that's for sure. There's a branch right up there that hasn't fallen down yet in about three years. 
and it's on his last limb. One of these days, that sucker is gonna fall right on top of me as I'm crossing this path. <laughs> but there is a bald eagle that is perched up uh, right up on this tree right here along the trail. It's been a while since I've caught these guys. Uh, I wanna get a couple shots in the bucket, even if they're not too great. They're always a treat to see out here in the wild. And there he goes, just like that. Can't wait to get more opportunities of these eagles. Absolutely love shooting the bald eagles. Hopefully one day I can get a really cool hunting shot or something similar to that, that'd be really cool. So here's a little pro tip. No matter how much sweat you have on your eyes or on your forehead, never, never touch your eyes and wipe your eyes when you have bug spray or bug lotion on your skin. <laughs> Don't ever trust me out here in the field, guys. <laughs> I'll always make a fool of myself, that's for sure. If you want to help support the channel, uh, consider becoming a member for just a couple dollars a month. You get a couple extra perks. So here's where we're going to get a couple shots of these little guys uh, along the marsh here, along the brushes. There's a lot of smaller little birds that keep, they're really super, super fast. They keep moving pretty quick. It's about six o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so we still got a couple hours still left of daylight. However, I am running out of water So we may have to get the filter out out of the backpack and uh, Fill her up out of the pond over here Because we are still about six miles out away from the car sit down In one spot for a little bit and see if we can get these small little guys I want you guys to always remember that it's about the experience. I always preach that on the channel. Uh, not so much about gear, not so much about technique, uh, which have their place, don't get me wrong, they all have their place. But if you wanna hold on to that joy out here, you have to always make it about the experience. And I can't believe, guys, I encountered my first Osprey. <laughs> so stinking cool, man. So cool. Knowing my luck while I'm down here getting some shots of these birds, a rattle is going to come up. I mean, I got the tool to suck out the venom, but I really don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, now that I got a bunch of thorns in me, <laughs> I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed those few photographs that I was able to get of the bald eagle, the osprey. <laughs> my first encounter of an osprey. Wasn't all that great, but it was really a cool experience nonetheless. Definitely let me know in the comments below what kind of system you're using, what kind of camera bag you're using, uh, and uh, what kind of system you're running. We'd love to hear about it. I love hearing about what other people are using, what kind of gear everybody else is using. Hopefully you guys can get out into nature and enjoy that opportunity that is in front of you with your cameras. Remember, there's no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. And until the next video, guys, take care, God bless, and I'll see you guys on the next adventure. Cheers.